Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Man's No Bull Beer Reviews. Today I have another beer from Dancing Gnome Brewing Company out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, this beer is called Inner Earth. You can see that there. Um, I don't know if this logo is supposed to be like this is the core of the earth and then these are the different, the mantle and uh, I don't remember what all they are. Layers of the earth. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a double IPA, which is a pretty standard offering by those guys and this one has it's a uh, Simcoe and Amarillo so I fully expect this to be an old school dank um, type of beer so we'll see it is 8% ABV so this is from this year's batch um, they came out about a month ago they this is the the Second time they made it. Last year, <clears throat> it was um, draft only. So this is actually the first time they canned it. So it's cool. Um, but again, you know, I was already down here. I had moved already when they did this last year. So I didn't get a chance to try it last year. So I'm excited to give it a try. Um, as you can see, it pours a darker golden color. Almost a rusty orange with about a finger's worth of fluffy white head. <clears throat> Interesting. It doesn't smell um, quite as dank as I was expecting it to smell. It's a little on the um, the peachy, orangey side, actually. And it, it said it talk. It also said in the description that it had a, a prevalent presence of English malts, which I don't know if that is different than their other stuff. If they usually just use like standard American two row or what the deal is, so. That might be some of it too, because it does have a little bit of like a bready, like a sweet bread aroma. Not sweet bread like the meats, but sweet, like sweet bread. Um, I do pick up like a tiny bit of that medicinal Amarillo character, but it's very mild. There's almost something that's like strawberry-like too, which is interesting. I wouldn't expect that from either one of those hops. I'm definitely picking up some of that uh, medicinal character from the Amarillo. Uh, that's just how I describe it. I know a lot of other people don't. For a lot of other people, it's more of like a a flowery, earthy thing. But to me, it kind of... Sometimes it comes off as like chalky and medicinal. It's um, it's not like a super detractor in this beer, but I, I definitely get it. Um... It's weird, like, it's not that, I guess Simcoe isn't that thick. Simcoe can go a lot of ways, um, sometimes it's very dank, sometimes it's very, um, piney, some, and I, I, to me, I, I, I differentiate those two things, they're not the same, some people think they're like the same type of thing, I don't think they are, um, but sometimes it can lean a little juicy too, because I remember back in maybe, like, the late 2000s or 2010 Simcoe was like the fancy new hop and it was that was like the first thing that started pushing towards the juicy side uh like I get some orange in the flavor but it is not like juicy orange or candied oranges it is like pithy dry bitter orange I will say, this one finishes with a, a nice finish. Like, it has a really nice balancing bitterness to the sweetness, because it is kind of sweet. Um, but it's not, uh, some of their IPAs, I guess probably because this is like a month old, it's not super, super fresh, so maybe it was like that when it was fresh, but 
or fresher. Uh, but it doesn't have like that backed in burn. So it is, it is pretty balanced. I will say that much, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of lacking on the back end. It, uh, you get that really bitter, um, when I say bitter, it's not like back of the tongue, a hot burn or even hot bitterness. It's more of just like a bitter orange peel. You get that strong bitter orange peel flavor. You get a little bit of that um, earth and earthy uh, medicinal character from the Amarillo. And I guess there's a little bit of orange juice. But then after that, it falls, it falls into this like dry, bready character. Um, it doesn't finish with any type of like hop juice or flavor. Um, yeah, there's almost a little bit of like a, a vegetal character to it too, now that I'm really digging into like the flavor on the back end, um, but I think that's digging into the orangey notes, almost sometimes if something's dry hop for too long, it can have like a little bit of a vegetal character, I'm picking that up a little bit in this, uh, and then it, fi it finishes, a, like, the dryness, I don't know, it's just really weird. It's not, um, it's not a dryness that wants me to go back for more and drink more of the beer, because I don't, like, love, love the taste. Uh, it's just, like, a dryness that makes me want to just drink water, which is odd for, um, a beer. Uh... <clears throat> I do like the fact that it's balanced, but I'm not the biggest fan of the flavor in general. Um, but it, it's definitely not because it's not old, it's not aged or falling off. Uh, it's just the hop combination isn't what I would want or expect from those two hops. Maybe there's something with the malt bill too that's weird, but uh, it's just not one of my favorite beers by these guys, and um, there's definitely better double IPAs to be had for sure. So, um, I'd say on my scale of buy, drink, dump, I'm just going to give this one a drink. Uh, I don't mind drinking it. It's a decent IPA. Uh, but I know these guys can do better. Um, when I say do better, that you know, it's still based on my taste. Someone else might love this. Uh, just... I know they make other beers that I like better, um, and I definitely can get better stuff here locally in Charlotte, so I'm just going to give this one a drink. Um, yeah, it's not a bad beer. I'll definitely finish it. But I think that's all I got in this one. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.